Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Space Engineers. So, Space Engineers just released survival mode. You can see at the bottom right there, we're on 01, 021, 029. Usually we talk about the 029, 64-bit. Uh, the build was on the 14th, and I think today is actually the 16th in my time. Um, and yeah, we are going to play survival multiplayer. Uh, I have a world actually going right now, and we're going to just join that, and I'm going to start fresh. But at the same time, we're going ahead and uh, show you how to create a new world and get started in survival. So basically, as a new player or any player, you would hit New World, and you would click Custom World. And here you get a nice little option of how you want to play. So you can have Easy Start, Easy Start 2, Lone Survivor, Two Platform, Asteroids, or Empty Worlds. I'm just going to let you know right away doesn't matter which option you play, um, if you die or your um, cloning machine dies, you pretty much are going to start in this ship, like the a picture in the Asteroids one. So I just prefer just to play Asteroids, since if you're going to end up in a ship probably anyways, and if you're playing multiplayer, it's just easier that everyone gets the same starting. So that means everyone starts in a ship. Um, I'm going to talk about more about the ship while when we're in game but basically you can name it whatever you want so hey. and then the description and then you can have, go creative or survival of course we're playing survival you got realistic 3x and 10x now at this stage of the alpha slash beta I, I guess we're still in alpha but uh, whatever at this stage i would suggest you go 3x uh, the reason I would say this is because realistic is awesome and I enjoy it, but at the same time, your inventory capacity is just not appropriate to the mechanics currently in the game. Uh, for example, conveyor belts are coming, but they're not in yet, and there is a lot of hauling uh, and micromanaging just like from one interface to another back and forth, and we'll show you that over the time uh, how I do it to make it a little more simple, but uh, at this time it can get a little painful. So. I suggest doing 3x. 10x is probably too much. I wouldn't mind 10x inventory. I've talked to the developers already, and I think most of us agree that we like to see uh, more advanced sliders so you can change, say, hey, I want more inventory, but I want to keep 1x speeds, for example, well, and processing, and oh, and less materials even. So it, there's little things that I do like about the 3x, of course, but there's things I would like to keep at 1x. So there's going to be some finer attunement down the road. You can have it offline, private, friends, or public. Um, I would suggest probably keeping your game uh, offline or private, um, even if you want to play with friends. If you trust all your friends on your list, sure. I guess with me, I have a profile of like three or 400 people, so I tend to get a lot of spam. Uh, and of course, you can set your max player, so um, you can go up to 16 right now. And you can go max objects, uh, 1,024. I actually keep mine at 512. I probably would suggest don't keep it higher than probably 64 for yourself. Um, you could go a bit higher, maybe 1024, but it can get a bit laggy. Um, asteroid count here. Uh, I wouldn't probably even go with large without a 64-bit computer. Oh, in fact, uh, it says, yeah, extreme should be 64. Honestly, I'd probably go 64 from large to extreme. Um, basically, I've never crashed in 64-bit uh, running... Uh, the game for days um, and this is how you run a server uh, as well they're gonna do a dedicated server without the uh, the visual aspect of it but this is how you do it for now so I'll just say 4 for this but our, the one I'm doing is 16 so I'll do that and you know I'm doing 512 um, we're just gonna be joining us previous save games so we don't even have to worry about this part but there you go auto healing on or off so uh, like you'll slowly gain health um, over time rather than um, having to go to a med station I always turn that off auto save I would always suggest turning off it will impact your experience and enjoyment of the game but if you tend to crash a lot you might want to consider leaving it on but I personally feel like if you leave it on you have more chance of crashing or something might accidentally derp up during a save it's very very possible but very very seldom happens and I just feel better if I decide when I like to save um, and weapons enable or disable I disable them here just because uh, there's no need to screw around too much and then you go okay it creates a world and then you start off so I'm going to load a world now to show you that start off basically. Uh, so here's the world that uh, a few of us are playing. 
Um, and uh, you can see if I edit the settings, you can even see yeah, the settings all here already. So you can actually edit all the settings offline, work perfect. So let's go and load our world and uh, we're going to hit turn public on temporarily for Fugner to be able to join. I'll even send him a little in-game invite so he knows that the server's back up and running. And we'll go. And it will take a minute to load. My computer's like a little mini supercomputer, but this is a, a large world and you do load the entire environment. Not only that, when somebody joins, you are actually, I think you're saving, you're doing a quick save state and you are sending that entire world to that player as well. So it sends, I think, about a seven megabyte file for the largest one, which isn't too big, but uh, you just need to be aware that, uh, you know, you're gonna send a pretty large file over. Um, I'm gonna send you a big tip, tell you a big tip, I guess. Um, when you're running a server and you don't want to be, you know, playing actively the second, or let's just say you're waiting for things to refine, um, the best thing you can do is minimize the game. The game will actually calculate and run in the background, and at the same time, um, your like everything GPU-wise usually shuts down. Like all the graphics is pretty much removed and gutted. You'll go from like maybe 20, 30, 40 percent CPU down to like two or three percent CPU. Uh, it's amazing. Um, this is a little feature that I think is considered a feature. And consider that if you're going to AFK for the night because you're refining a lot of things, then please, please, please consider minimizing. Uh, it'll uh, you know use less hydro, it'll save the world, and at the same time put less stress on your computer. And then you just maximize when you wake up, and it'll take a minute for things to load, but it will load. So here we go. We're gonna we usually start like this. This is exactly how you start when you first come in. Um, I had previously. Uh, set this up to make sure I could spawn in here. I had to shut off all my old stations that I was playing in this world uh, because I wanted to start fresh with you lovely people. So now that I've done that, we're going to find ourselves an asteroid to land on. So as you can see, there's a bunch of asteroids here. You can see them everywhere. Um, of course, I want to go to a new asteroid, one that's not taken, or hopefully not taken. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go towards the Fugner one, but not too close to Fugner. I'm sure that one's probably taken. Uh, but what we can do is we can start going towards it, and the first thing you're going to want to do, you can see at the bottom right, my speed, hit Z, and inertia dampener is off. Because once I feel like I'm going at a good speed, like 30, you'll see my fuel time 5 minutes back to 3 minutes, and, or 3 days. And this is because now we're gliding. And you can hit Alt, and you can change your camera, by the way and I like to zoom out as well. If you hit Alt, you can look around, view around while in third person. Um, if you're in a small ship, you would hit V to get into the third person view, back and forth. Um, this gives you a bit more control and you'll be able to see a little better. So playing on a multiplayer server, you gotta respect you know, your neighbors. Um, I think a rule of thumb there is get your own asteroid um, or ask permission to use somebody else's asteroid if you see them online uh, because it's kind of rude to just barge in and start building on somebody's asteroid or even parking near them. If you make a mistake, a critical mistake, by drifting your ship, hitting your ship, something like that, it could be pretty bad. So when you get close, um, I'm very confident, you know, of this ship, I know how it maneuvers. So when I get close enough, I will hit Z to slow it down and like you know you, you, you want to make sure you do it far enough and I, f I would suggest all you do guys do it pretty far but uh, for me I would have probably gone a little sooner but <laughs> just for fun sake and showing you guys I'm gonna go a lot further out and have stopped it but now we're just gonna drift in we're just coasting in and you know sometimes perspective is a little hard in this game to see so if you go here you get a better perspective of you know how actual close we are you know we're not too bad so because we're starting off, it's probably better that, uh, oh, Fugner's on now. You can see he spawned at Chris's. Uh, I took Fugner's save, and uh, yeah, you guys are gonna laugh at this. My save got, somebody came on and griefed, and that's that happens. I took Fugner's save, and now we're all spawning on different medical bays right now. It's funny, I spawn at his, he spawns at Chris's, and I think Chris spawns at mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's something that needs to be looked at anyway. So, um, we're done. Now, a lot of people will tell you you need to turn off non-essentials on your ship. I don't believe that. 
you got three days running time here. If we go in K and say, hey, let's turn off the gravity, interior light, uh, refinery, uh, assembler, let's see how much we saved in fuel. Oh, it's 27 days. But you had three days. I think that's very little. Like, you, like, if you're not going to take the action now, it wouldn't matter anyways. Like, <laughs> at that point, you're screwed anyway. So I would say three days is more than enough for me anyways. Uh, you might as well leave the interior light on, but the rest you're going to end up using. Um, no, look at that. What did we save? Nothing. Even with the interior light, there could be a minute amount. I'm not even sure if it uses power. So first thing you're going to want to do is hit your... Uh, hit T on the console, and then you can hit X to go into jetpack mode, and you come out of here. Why do I keep my thrusters on? Why do I keep my inertia dampeners on? Because if this ship got bumped, this ship is gone and flying away. You do not want that at all. So basically, your next and main option now here is to get an idea where you are. We see our rock here, and I probably shouldn't turn... Oh, there we go. Yeah, you probably be, be careful with your inertia dampeners off. Um, if I were to turn them off and slide into this rock at that speed, I'd probably be fine. But overall, you probably will get yourself killed pretty fast. So if you spawn at an asteroid like this one, there might not be a lot of good yours on the outside. Most of it's inside. Um, if you hit a rock like this, that there might not be an inside. You might be screwed. Oh, looks like we have an inside. Um, so your only, only job at this point is uranium. Um, you can hit a light and get a bit of a light out of it. I kind of wish I could crank it up a wee bit more. Uh, my screens are a bit darker than others, but uh, my monitor that is. But uh, yeah, so basically you're exploring. All this, I'm just going to tell you off the bat, is iron you're seeing. And uh, iron's a good thing, don't get me wrong. I think this is cobalt up here. Um, at the same time, sometimes if you can't find any uranium, you might have to just float yourself to another asteroid. Which looks like we might need to do that. No big deal. Um, don't panic. Don't You know, you can take your time. Uh, as long as you're not going to use your ship and move it around at this point, and you're going to use yourself to move around. Um, because you yourself can move quite far. you got a decent amount of energy on yourself. And... Uh, you can see the bottom left there, you got 90 energy, I feel confident, cool. This is all you have to do, you have to feel good. Oh, is it like some kind of silver or is that just a lot of shine to it? Huh. Just a lot of shine I think. Okay, so, I mean I can fly around this asteroid day and night, might never ever find uh, uranium or there could be a small pocket on it. But uh, if you don't think you can find it, just go to another asteroid, no big deal. I'm just going to quickly check around here. It's kind of fun just to navigate around these puppies anyways. You never know. There could be another uh, entrance to this asteroid. There could be another interior. It's a pretty small one, so... Yeah, that's pretty small. I keep going back to mine. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, you, you decide, hey, I'm going to check out another asteroid, one that's bigger or one that, you know... So out there, so uh, let's go towards this this one. This is a good reference. Um, there's Fugner. Uh, let's go straight here to Minor One, and uh, this is a previous base that I worked on actually. And uh, I'm just gonna go inside the asteroid itself. At the same time, when I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the systems here from before, just so they're on. Um, and turn them off. You can turn everything off by hitting Y while in the console seat, so that's all I'm doing. We're not going to look at that. That's not our episode. We're starting fresh here. So I think I'm on that asteroid there. Yeah, that's not a bad way. So I can always use minor. Yes, that's with a no, and it's not spelled wrong. <laughs> uh, it's just a joke. Inside joke. Anyways, you can see my ship there even. So when we're in here, you can already see. There you go. Uranium. And look at another pocket of uranium. Good. So we got lots of uranium. So at this point, what we do is hit G. Um, most of the time, you have a whole bunch of items on your hotbar, but you don't have the items that you should. So let's just clear them out. You can hit right click. And by the way, this is opening G, opening and closing G. Um, and you start with three items. So you have a hand drill, you have a grinder, and you have a want, uh, welder. I like to flip these too. So the way do we flip these is we go there and there. And this drill is your life. This is what we're going to use today. 
and uh, as you can see the light is actually on it's just that material is really bad some materials are really darker which is fine um, so yeah here's the uranium and we're gonna hold down T T is your loop button the best way right now that I find is holding T um, there's things called gravity wells you can make which can hold the, uh, the ore in a certain area which works but uh, overall um, if you hold T and work your way through this we can gather some and then hopefully you can grab some of the floating ores as well while we're floating around. Yeah. Now, for some of you guys playing with friend server, there's a major, major bug that the developers are going to try to work on. They are working on it's high priority um, for them, of course. Uh, is there's some syncing issues here and there. First of all, the, one of the biggest syncing issues is ores, um, and it's almost not a syncing issue. It's just a weird, weird, bizarre bug. So because I'm hosting it, you will never see it. Um, Fugner sometimes mining. Like if you were, I would say mine here, Fugner. Sometimes materials will drop off it, but anywhere you mine, something drops because it's made out of a material. If it's a rock, stone, iron. Uranium. It doesn't matter. But some people are having issues where um, the ores aren't actually showing up. They oh, see that's iron. So I don't want to pick up iron right now. But some people are having issues where it doesn't work at all. Um, and what ends up happening is they need to uh, go closer to you know where it says uh, oh um, it says there's nickel that way. For Fugner, he has to go about four to five meters away from where it says nickel before he can actually get nickel. Some days that he doesn't have to do that, some days he has to. Um, it's up and down. Some people, there could be three people logged in. Some of them are perfect, some of them are not. My friend Chris, who's on, uh, who plays LAN, basically he's in the same house as me, he has no issues like that. It's very strange. It's a bug that they're working on, of course. Syncing and uh, the multiplayer stuff is, you know, a pretty big, you know, priority for them. But of course, you have to remember alpha, beta, etc takes time they do a lot of updates so don't curse at them sometimes yeah your enjoyment yeah, I know you want to play you want your friends to play you want things to be perfect I want things to be perfect but unfortunately not everything works out that way and that's just the life of development so at the bottom left you can see your volume if you're playing at 1x your max volume I believe is 4,000 uh, if you're playing at 3x uh, your max volume is 12,000 if you hit I as for inventory you can actually see that the leaders there and the volume there um, so we got a decent amount of uranium ore already. I'm going to collect a bit more just so we have it. And uh, then we're going to head back to all ship and we're going to start processing this. And this is basically day one key survival. Um, without this, you would be slightly very screwed. Notice I said slightly and very. <laughs> And during this Let's Play series, we are going to be canalizing our current ship. Um, I've talked to the developers about that, and we're, we're hoping in the future that they add a feature I really like. I, I, I wouldn't say I've came up with it because I know other games like Minecraft has a similar feature, but the idea here is basically, uh, I think I was on that rock, wasn't I? Or was I that rock? Oh god. Hopefully this is me, but now I have a feeling that isn't me. This is when you get a little lost. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I think this might be me. Yep, I think that is. I'm pretty sure that's me now, yep. Okay, so, oh. Let the inertia, okay, so when you let go and hit Z, by the way, when you let those inertia go and it's off, you let go your controls. You take your fingers off those controls. If you manipulate them, you will slow down slower. You cannot physically slow down yourself faster than they can slow you down. That's the number one key to everything. Just remember that. So now we're here. We can go in here, and you can see my fuel is 0.19. We did really well. We've only used 0.01 which isn't really bad at all um, because you can't like they give you little fuel that's the whole point and you need to get uranium uh, ASAP um, 
I would say just stay where you are with your ship, but you don't start with a beacon, so you can never find your ship again. So the best thing you can do is actually uh, go to an asteroid and drift towards it and then stop your ship. So there we go. We, we use the interface and um, we use the refinery. Hit K, by the way, not T. I should tell you this. By the way, hit K on the interface here and you put your ore in there. Uh, and you'll refine it. Now the uranium takes a lot longer than most ores. Uh, there's a few that are slow too. Uh, iron's really fast, like iron is 3.5. Yeah, it's um, But yeah, uranium takes time. Now the refinery is hooked up to the assembler. There's these little uh, square slots on um, objects, almost every object in the game. And the refinery and the assembler have these two things connected. You can't see them, but they're they're in between as well. They have multiple uh, facings on them. And this is really big. This is a lot bigger than it looks like. Uh, it's just the, the angle and the view you're seeing it. Uh, here's the refinery. This whole big long piece that's sticking out of the back is the refinery. You're only seeing a little slot of it. And the assembler is right here and it goes another huge block in. And that's the assembler itself. So, yeah. Um, oops. Did I literally just bounce off? And, yep. So as you can see, there you go, inertia's off, that's why. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? Okay, so we're gonna go in here, turn off our jetpack, and there we go. So the refinery's not doing too bad. And if we go to our assembler, you can see, look at that, we've just basically made the same amount of uranium uh, ingots that you start with. And you just put it in there, and there you go. The cycle of life is going and running. So one thing you must know, and this is a must, 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 is if you lose power on this ship ever, let's just say this power went down and I died, just completely died, you would start out in another clone ship like this. Now, for some people, they don't care. For you playing on a multiplayer server, or if you're ever to play on my servers, not so good. I personally don't find it appropriate that everyone starts in these ships over and over. And also, um, you're creating lag on the server because you're going to have multiple these ships and some of them are going to start drifting off. Um, it's why it's a key to you know pay attention when you first start and start going to that asteroid, stop your ship completely, and leave it idle. Because these ships will just keep floating away in space. You'll spawn another one and another one, and it just it gets taxing for the hosts and other players even over time uh, playing. Uh, one of the suggestions I have for the devs, which I was talking before, is you can kind of cannibalize your system. So, uh, this is, you know, good if you want to play this way, but also bad for some people who don't like it. Because it's in the game right now, and it's basically one of the things that everyone's going to do anyways, we've just decided to do it. So, if you use your saw, you can look and hover over, and even if you weld it, you can look at your, you can repair and look at things. Uh, but you can see the resources it has. It has four steel plates, ten construction components, two computers, one display, two motors, four uh, steel tubes. You, you, you know, you can name it. It has everything. So if you use this, if you hate the door to begin with, like I do, you can... I always somehow don't get my that aster probably. You can actually take it and saw it down and remove the entire door, but also give all the parts. Now make sure your inventory is not full. Let's just pretend if my entire inventory was full, that this said 1,200 plus. Uh, what would happen is the parts wouldn't be showing, like they wouldn't be removing off this anymore. And if you were to break this with the inventory full, the parts would actually float away or sit here because there's some gravity. That's not a good thing. So you should go to your cargo container, hit K on it, and start removing stuff. So you can double click everything here. And I would suggest you use the cargo container to, like the first cargo container to hold parts. I would suggest that you leave your refinery to hold the ores up here. And I would suggest leaving the processed uh, materials, like the uranium ingots, the iron ingots, in your, uh, any ingot basically slots, and just leave them for now. Uh, over time, you will use this to craft and produce uh, items. Um, but yeah, I would suggest you leave them there. That's how I do it to you know, organize my inventory. But anyways, you can finish taking this off and boom, it's gone. And if you ever wanted to build another door, let's just say you wanted to build another door. Might as well show you in the first episode how to craft. Uh, you can go easily like this and hit G key. 
and then you can go to the door, so the door is right here, and you drag it onto your bar here, and you can put it right here, and you can just click, just like that, you just click. And you'll notice when you do that, it'll only use like one part, so one steel plate. So to create the store, just originally, just to put the frame there, you can put one steel plate. You don't even have to own the parts, and you can slowly uh, add them in there. And then you just click this, and you can see the parts will automatically get it added in there. So you can have a buddy help you weld, and if both of you are welding, yes, it's double. Actually, for some reason it feels even faster. I don't know if it really is, but it just feels that way. And there you go. Um, you would have created your first door if you kept welding it. And that's how you do the basic um, you know, crafting of an item in the world. Now, producing things, you can go to the assembler, it doesn't matter where you go, but you go to production, and you see blueprints for all the m m well, mini parts here. And then you can see, you know, uh, things like uh, you can an automatic rifle, you have weapons disabled, so that we need to work ammo. You can make your grinder and welder, but that, that doesn't really exist here. Um, and, uh, or need to exist because, of course, we start with one. Even if you die, you start with one. You've got more parts. Now, these are a little different. Some people do this, some they don't. Basically, you can click a small container. Uh, well, actually, here. Is the door in this one? Is the door in any of these? Yeah, here it is. So here's the door. It requires all that iron, that nickel, cobalt, silicone, wafer, and gold. So you could click this, and basically what would happen is it would produce all this for you. It would just craft this all. And there you go. And you can go in here, pick it out of the assembler, and pick it out of the cargo container. And of course, you'd have to get K on it, but you would pick it up in here. This is one way of doing it. It's one way I suggest you not do. Uh, later on, when you have lots of resources, sure, why not? But instead, create the steel plate, create the interior plate, create all this. I think that's the best way of doing it, and it's really easy because all you have to do is go to production, create you know a bunch of steel plates like that. Uh, and when you hit G and hover over the actual door, it tells you up here what's the large ship uh, version cost. And some things are large ship, small ship. So how much is a steel plate? For a large ship, it's 25. For a small ship, it's only one steel plate. Things like that. And I feel like that's one of the better ways of learning and uh, doing it by hand rather than doing just that. And even if I were to place, you know, this and, you know, oh. My life support's getting there. So let's say I wanted to put this there. It's going to say you need a steel plate. So you only need one single steel plate. So we can drag this. By the way, if you drag it with right click, it will bring up the split menu. So I can say one. And let's just say I place this here. There you go. And I can weld this. And you can weld it to a point to how much materials are in it. You can see one of 20. And when you hover over it, you can see what parts you need. And this is just a good way I do it of crafting. Um, so when your suit is low, you can see at the bottom left it's red, you get a warning. You can either go to the medical bay and hold T on it, or you can even go to your console and hit T on it and it'll recharge. So you can just idle like that. Um, you can see my fuel time is 32, this is because the refinery is running. This is completely fine because right now with the refinery running, I can just put more ingots in it over and over because it's just pro processing uranium, which is our main source of fuel right now. So not a problem at all. The only thing I can suggest though, and this is a, a kind of a, a big deal here, is if you're playing multiplayer with other players and you're not the host, so basically when you turn off the game, um, you know, if you come back, uh, that's fine. But if you are a multiplayer on a server, etc., um, it's, just, it's just a good thing anyways. You should probably turn off your refineries because just because, yeah, you're producing uranium, there is no uh, conveyor belts right now to auto put it into the reactor. So what would happen is you come back, you would have no power. You would spawn in another yellow ship. So my idea on that before we end the episode today is that I would like them to make it so that there's... Uh, an MBT data. Well, there's like some kind of data storage in here. This is MBT, I say like Minecraft. Basically, for the color here, um, is set by, you know, storing data in the block. I like it to make it so if there's no salvage. So when you go over here, you can't salvage it. Like, you can salvage it, but you cannot get any parts for it. It'll actually warn you and say this is like a, uh, you know, machine that won't give you parts. So this would help you build a new base. You would have to farm and mine for everything, but at the same time, you can't, um, you, you know, cannibalize your systems to build smaller and medium tier, uh, 
you know, I, there's only small and large ships, but when I say medium, like medium tier gameplay, basically jump into it. Uh, another suggestion too is it'd be nice if you play on the platform one that everyone can clone at the platform. Like you can have a setting at the cloning machines to make it so everyone, I mean everyone, can start and go to that cloning machine. Not only that, if people set it on their cloning machines and maybe even have an option where it's maybe enabled by default so people have to disable it depending on maybe the admin options or the game options. People can start at other people's cloning machines, whatever's closer to their base. This prevents any ships ever spawning again. And that myself, I would think is a great idea. I don't like the idea of everyone starting a ship, I would prefer everyone to be forced to do cooperative play on a platform and then expand from there. So the platform would be, you know, a little base that we can help people get started and then from there they can expand out or we can expand out together. Um, that's just one of the things I would like to see. Um, it's more of a suggestion. But overall, I'm having a lot of fun. Please remember this game is alpha um, and beta, and the developers always would love to see your feedback on their official forums or the Steam forums. Um, and remember, don't say, I hate this, this needs to change now. Just say, hey, I, I'm having fun, but you know, here's some suggestions that I would prefer just, you know, you know, my gameplay. And remember, don't don't demand it should be this way or that way. Don't argue it should be this way or that way. Just remind them that, by the way, having an option for both is probably a better idea. This way everyone's happy, and there's a bit for everyone. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and hope you've enjoyed this episode. And uh, yeah, I'll do some more episodes if you guys are enjoying this. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned, and thanks so much for watching.